Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Peace and blessings upon you all. Um, the students we were talking about uh, last time about the legs or flags, or e even if you have a Java, then you the scanner generator will be J legs. And there are many more, uh, basically, which uh, uh, data or uh, everything uh, like uh, from regular expression to transient diagrams and all those things and to the code then later on automatically but now it's time to get into these guys and see how the scanners actually work because you know uh, if we are talking about a regular expression it is something as a, you know some 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 sort of declarative way to describe the token okay and uh, because it describes uh, what a token is but it doesn't uh, recognize it so it describes the token but it's not going to recognize the token. So to recognize the token, we need something else called finite automata. Okay, uh, that's used uh, to describe how the token is recognized. So if you want to recognize, uh, you need FA. Or sometimes we say this is only an uh, this is a description or representation, and this guy finite automata is actually the implementation. okay okay so uh, we technically have uh, our scanner has an RE and then we have what is called as the finite automator here okay this is my scanner generator and it will give you some kind of uh, program if we talk of for example JLEX so it will be Java scanner program or it will be an C program if you say Lex and all so we got here a scanner program what kind of it is so it will take up the input stream then of characters and convert that into the tokens uh, we need it okay uh, this guy this part now it is time to go into this uh, so um, into this box of uh, what's called a scanner generator and try to see how it uh, does the job okay um, if we talk of the main parts of our uh, scanner generator, uh, then they are like, I will make this box now a little bigger. And we have, for example, regular expressions coming on this side. Then firstly, it converts into NFA, non-deterministic final automata. We'll talk about this. Then it is converted to DFA, deterministic final automata. Then it's converted to minimize the DFA. DFA and this guy then creates a program and after that it's uh, you know this is the, actually the basic structure of your uh, scanner generator okay and uh, now we may have this is the RE coming from this side right okay I have written here so it's here so we have what's called the Thompson's construction Okay, uh, to convert RE to NFA, then from NFA to DFA we have what's called as a subset construction. Then from DFA to minimize the DFA, we have a minimization, and then we have what's called a DFA simulation on here. We'll talk about all these things in detail, but firstly, uh, let's try to understand this A. Then we come out to the NFA and DFA. So A for automata. So what is automata and uh, what kind of, uh, what it is doing here, because you may have done it in the course of theory of computation. If not, uh, then we will be discussing here, but if you have done it in TOC, you can skip this part and go forward, okay? So A here is uh, the automata or the automaton, okay, which is to study about the abstract machines. To understand it, uh, let us first see whatever uh, computer is all about, okay. We have, uh, a, for example, a CPU. This is my CPU. And it has some inputs. 
and it gives us some outputs okay and then it has a uh, memory for a program so program memory and it has some kind of temporary memory while it does some computation which it, it has to do right say for example uh, we want to compute uh, some example uh, in, a, in all kind of books we have is an f of x is called x cube for example when I do the cube of the x so what will happen in our CPU is we got the input and we have the output okay uh, definitely we have a temporary memory uh, and yet it's not used but we have we may have uh, our uh, program memory which has the instructions like we have compute x into x okay then we gonna do again compute well after doing x into x we already have the x square then you multiply it with the x again okay now um, after this maybe our input is 2 maybe my input came in that is 2 so now x is no more x it is the 2 okay now after that when we have the input uh, we need a temporary memory to take part okay because program is saying this thing compute x uh, cross x then again compute x square cross x now our temporary memory need to work out okay in a temporary memory so our, our situation will change this is my temporary memory for example so which will say for example take up some a, a variable temporary variable say y equals 2 cross 2 firstly that is equal to 4 that is this statement then uh, compute actually f of x that is actually equals to whatever the y is and multiply it with the 2 so y is 4 into 2 that is 8 so this thing will be done in the in the temporary memory right so this is temporary memory we had a cpu we had an input of 2 and output is still uh, waiting and then we have our uh, you know program memory which has the couple of instructions which is uh, which we wrote on the top okay now after that you know output will come out uh, in our uh, here in our output will also come when you, when you compute this thing so we say hey f of x equals to 8 right this is my output now uh, the situation we deal dealt with right now uh, in a physical machine we can do the, these things with the abstract machine as well so to view our abstract machine is basically our automaton which is an abstract machine which is not an actual machine which has a temporary memory which has a CPU and program memory okay and then we got the inputs and outputs now if we are talking about this abstract machine this is our automaton especially this uh, this part which is actually our automaton okay so automaton is a uh, you know it behaves as an abstract machine so inside uh, this uh, uh, abstract machine which we talked about we view it as not as a CPU or programs memory or something like that we see it as a state machine so what we see as an automaton is we see it like this we say hey we have a temporary memory and in our automaton we are having some kind of states okay which are moving from one direction to another and so on right so these are my states and we have the transitions in those states and all those things then we have the inputs and we have the outputs now this is this kind of machine here you see as a state state uh, machine is my automaton with some input uh, and output and, and, and a temporary memory right now depending upon the temporary memory what kind of if you have temporary memory or not uh, you may distinguish your uh, depending on that we have actually different um, kinds of automata so if you see different kinds of automata we have firstly a finite automata
So in Final Automata, we don't have uh, the temporary memory, no temporary memory. This memory is not there, right? And in case of push down automata, push down automata is the second one we have in an automata. Okay, we have actually a stack instead of temporary memory. And in case of third, we have a Turing machine. This is my Turing machine, which actually has the random access memory. Uh, uh, in place of the temporary memory, right? So we got three uh, kinds of uh, automata. One is final automata, where we don't have the temporary memory. Okay. Um, so what we're telling about is uh, this is my uh, finite automata, where I don't have any kind of temporary memory, right? Here, I have the inputs and I got the output and I got a state machine. Uh, in between as an automaton while as in the this is my um, uh, the push down automata this is the push down automata where I have a stack as a temporary memory okay uh, and I got an automaton inputs and outputs as usual but as a temporary memory I got a stack where it can do pushes and pops and if I go back a bit okay in uh, my uh, this thing, let me change the pen. Um, take it right there. Okay, in this one, uh, as a final automata, we need a very small computing power. This is done for a very very s simple problems, like we got an elevator problem, right? Very simple one or vending machine, where we have a you know small computing power. So if you have a one of small computing power, then we can use what's called as a final automata. But if our uh, complexity is a bit more, okay, uh, we can say like uh, medium medium computing power. If we have a medium computing power, then we may be needing uh, what is my pen? Then we may need uh, what is called if we have a medium. computing power then you, you may you may need uh, the push down automata where you have a stack and all those things for example uh, example of this is a compiler for program languages we're going to construct a compilers uh, for programming languages okay then we need uh, the push down automata and while if we have now for, as a temporary memory we have a RAM then this is going to be the Turing machine, okay? Uh, where we have a random access memory firstly as my temporary memory, and rest is same, and it can do any algorithm, whatever like, okay? Uh, it, it needs the highest computing power. Okay? So, um, so if we talk about the automata, we have uh, firstly the final automata, which is a little simpler than the push down automata and it's simpler than the Turing machine. Okay, here we have the hardest problems. Here maybe we have the complex problem, but not that hard. And here we have a simple problem. So here we need a less power and here we need a more power. So less power on this side and a more power on this side and complexity as well as uh, also uh, increases uh, from the Turing machine side, okay? So Turing machine is the most powerful uh, kind of thing. If we, what, what, what we're talking about these things is called as a computation model, okay? So Turing machine is the most powerful computational model uh, we have. So this, uh, if you see the little history, um, the automata is actually the study of abstract computing devices or machines, okay? Um, even uh, before there were computers, in 1930, uh, this, this thing was started by the, you know, actually the Turing. So firstly we say uh, automata, it is an abstract computing device, so it's, it may not be an actual, 
if not in, in, uh, you know, even a physical device, hardware, okay? Um, we actually uh, were trying to solve a fundamental question of computer science, that is, uh, for what uh, different model machines can do and cannot do. So therefore, we had actually two kinds of things. One is called computability, one is called complexity. The complexity was like we discussed uh, that how much hard the problem is. Is it simpler? Is it more harder? Or is it more harder? Like that. But the computability means that whether you can solve it or not. Because there, it was seen that the, you can't solve even uh, the many problems by the, by the computer. Okay? Uh, so uh, the, the, these three, automata, computability, and complexity, they are actually, you know, kind of uh, uh, ready together. So it was in 1930 uh, um, when that's what we have the father of modern computer science. It is the Alan Turing. Okay, he studied the abstract machines. Uh, those machines uh, were like uh, today's computers. They have they have capabilities to do all those things what today computers are. Uh, okay. So the Turing uh, goal was to describe precisely the boundary between what a computing machine could do and what it could not do. Uh, so we, uh, he applied those things to the Turing machine. Uh, those things can be applied today to the real machine. So if you want to build a real machine, you can uh, and to check its capability whether this can be done or not on a particular today's machine. You can uh, apply that to the abstract machine and then actually build the actual machine. Okay. In 19, actually 40s and 50s, uh, we had a simple kind of machines, uh, which we today call finite automata. Okay, uh, they were studied uh, by a number of researchers. Uh, in uh, the 1950s, uh, we had a uh, Anne Chomsky, uh, a linguistic. Uh, he studied the grammars. Uh, which are not strictly machines, but the grammars are related closely to the automata, and this serve uh, uh, today as a basis for uh, you know compiler building, compiler construction, which we'll talk about uh, in the in our next layer. Okay, uh, these grammars act actually uh, studied with the Chomsky, and they really helped uh, to build the compilers and work with the automata. Okay. In 1969, actually Cook extended the Turing study uh, of what could and what could not be computed. So Cook actually separated those problems. He was able to separate those problems that can be solved efficiently by the computer from those problems that can, in principle, be solved. Uh, what I mean is, uh, there are some problems uh, which can be solved, but they take so much of time that it is it's it's it's, it's of useless. Uh, the computers become useless. So we say that they are the problems uh, which you can solve them, but uh, they take so much of time uh, the computers are useless uh, for them. Okay, for these kind of problems, these kind of problems are actually called as intractable problems or anti hard problems okay even uh, as for the uh, you know uh, Moore's law we are improving you know computing and speed uh, still it's highly unlikely uh, to improve our efficiency in solving these problems so that's why we call them as a uh, intractable problems or anti hard problems so it was the cook who introduced this thing and added to that and during uh, Statement that whether we can uh, computing as a, whether we can solve it or we could not solve it. Okay. All of these things, you know, uh, led the computer scientists uh, to work on these lines. Like we have uh, the final automata, then we have the formal grammars to use it to hold the softwares, like um, the compiler I said, and what we are working for, working on. And there are the concepts like uh, the Turing machine, 
uh, which helps us to identify the problems like we had the you know the problem we can say that they're empty hard or intractable problems so that uh, we may not start directly writing the programs for that rather we uh, try to find out some heuristics or some other ways around uh, to solve them okay so in general, if you see, uh, we have uh, in the center the FSM, finite state machines, and then we have the, what's called as the context-free grammars, and then we have here the Turing machine. So in, in FSM, we have a very simple uh, computational problems in this model. Then in a CFG context for grammars, I will put the, our uh, compilers, all those things we need to do, uh, deal it with the more detail, we take up in our next chapter. And this also contains the FSM. In a Turing machine, we can have a more complexity, which takes up all the things. And then on the top, we have something which is, which we can't decide, okay, that is undecidable, right? So now, um, it's time to jump into and uh, see what the FSM is all about. So we understood that our automata is actually a kind of a striped machine, okay, uh, where we can apply things and test our things and do all kind of things, okay. Now, uh, so we talk about now is uh, finite state machine. It's called a FSM, or it's also called as finite. Automata or automaton as a singular. Now, um, this finite state machine or finite state, uh, what is it? It, it is a basically a computational model which we discussed. It is a computational model. So, what is a computational model? It's a, the computational model is some idealized computer, right? It may be an abstract machine, but it's a kind of idealized computer which allows us to set up a manageable mathematical theory out of it. So we have a sort of idealized computer and which allow us to visualize and try we try to solve our problems on this machine, which is an abstract machine. Uh, and then uh, it will be much better to implement later on on an actual machine, right? And now this uh, finite uh, automata models are suitable uh, for doing uh, computation and all kind of things with the computers. Uh, it, it will be for computers which has a limited uh, power, so lesser uh, power. So we don't need any more power, okay? And um, which also need no memory, uh, either limited amount of memory or we don't have a memory. For example, we have a uh, a computer which opens a door, uh, automatic door, or there may be an elevator which is going top to bottom and bottom to top, or sometimes digital watches as well. Okay, uh, when we have a simple computation, uh, we uh, do the simple uh, patterns and we uh, talk about there the finite automata, okay, or finite state machine which has some finite states, okay. The finite automata uh, simply uh, works like uh, it decides, it takes a decision uh, whether to take, uh, whether to accept or reject a string. If you have a string, uh, you want to accept it or you don't accept it, okay? Now a finite uh, automaton or a finite string machine is actually a list of five objects. What a set of states, we have an input alphabet we have the transition, uh, we have a start state and exit state. A transition is shown with delta. Uh, that means x comma y equal to y means that you are from x state to y state. Uh, if 
the input is 1 okay so a finite uh, is uh, automated is a 5 tuple you know um, that is q means finite set uh, uh, of states then we have an input alphabet that's again a finite shown by the sigma then delta means from any q that is uh, from uh, whatever uh, elements we have and you have any input okay uh, whatever states you are you are on what state sorry on q or what is on whatever state you have and you take some input from the uh, alphabet and you will land into some other state which again belongs to q okay uh, that's the transition function then um, we have a start state q0 that again belongs to the, the set of states we have and we have the accepting state that is uh, where we say this. yes we for example we have a string and we are finished uh, we identified that and we say yes uh, we are done so that's an accepting state so we may show them using a transition diagram you know state diagram uh, as we know we have already dealt with those things let me do it again so if we have a state for example any state which is shown by the circle and if it is start state then you can use the arrow up front from you know coming from nowhere and if it is accepting state for example is f we show it by the double circle as we know and a transition which what we're talking about is that you are from a state for example one state uh, for example, this was x and you have gone to the y on input 1 so that this, this thing will be shown by this guy delta x comma y equals to x comma 1 equals to y means on input 1 you are going from x to y okay let's take up uh, the examples um, to understand it properly so if we uh, represent our final automaton as the transient diagram, uh, we know state is a circle and uh, sigma, that's alphabet, this is represented by the label on the edge. This is the label, this is the input. For example, one here and <coughs> moves or transitions. Um, so that's by the arrow, right? Uh, that tells us uh, on which input we are going from where to where. We're not going from y, y to x, we are going from x to y. And start state is arrow here at the beginning, and find the state by the double circle, as we know, right? So now let us take up the examples. So for example, we have a final automata that accepts on D1. Okay, so what you will do? Let me take it for a little bit. Um, you will have a start state. Okay, let it call it as the X, for example and what you do is you go to the another state if the input is one okay then when the input is one then this is gonna be the final state so this is uh, a final automata that accepts only one okay now uh, um, we call this a y state okay what another example uh, we have to this is a final automaton accepting any number of ones followed by a single zero and it will ever be as either zero or either one so that means uh, we need to have first a start state this is my start state let me call it as an a okay now um, any number of ones we can accept any number of ones so that means if there are any number of ones you will be staying there so it will be like this so that means if there are any number of ones no problem you can take any many number of ones here at the a but if there is a after ones if there is a zero uh, say for example after taking any many ones there is a zero whatever you do is you go into the final state or accepting state you are accepting it okay Say for example, our input uh, was like one, 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 and zero. 
So if, it, if, if, if you are at the 1, you had a state A, right? You are on a state A, okay? After you take uh, again 1, you are again on a state uh, A. You take again 1, you are again on a state A. It's kind of a loop on an A, right? You don't know 1, you are again at A. And then after you have a 0, that means you have gone to the state B. Now, that means you have reached it from the start state to the final state. So you're going to accept this string, right? If you had like this, if you had 0, 1, 1. Now, when you take a 0 at the start state, there is no transition for 0, so you will simply reject it. If you had like this, 1, 1, 0, what do you do? It's the same as like this, okay? Because on the A, 1, 1, you stay on the A, and when it's 0, you accept it, okay? We also have a presentation of what's called the transient table. So FA can be presented either by the trans state transition diagram or the state transition table. So how we do that is we have a transition function. Then we have the inputs, say here inputs are 0 and 1. And here we have the states, like we have got A and B. Right? Now A on input 1, input 0. So it goes nowhere, right? Uh, a on input 1 stays on an A. And similarly, B on input 0 or input 1, we have uh, we, we don't accept that, right? Similarly, if we have a better diagram, well, we, we can have, uh, say, for example, we have a transition diagram. We have, for example, uh, a language which says, because uh, what is the language here is uh, all those which are accepted by our finite state machine. That is our language, okay? And we have a language uh, where we have all words uh, ending in B. And our input symbol is A comma B. Now we have A, B as inputs. And we want to uh, see all those words which end in B. Okay, say for example, um, now this is my start state. Okay, okay, now if um, I have an input A here, I'm gonna stay on here, right? On this state, say this, this is state X. If I have an input A, I'm gonna stay at uh, stay on the X. The moment I uh, see a B, for example, I move to a state Y and I'm going to accept it because um, I think this is my uh, the last uh, alphabet. But maybe this is not the last alphabet, this there may be something else. If there are, for example, uh, all the Bs after that, so I have seen the B. If, there, if, if after this B I have any many Bs, I'm going to stay on a Y because that will. Uh, be my word with the ending in B. But maybe uh, after seeing, say for example, I had like this A, B, B, then I had an A. So I'm not going to accept it. So that's what I do. If I see on this state Y, I see an A, I go back to the state. Right? Uh, you getting me? So this is a kind of uh, automata which accepts all those strings which end with the B. Say for example, I have. Uh, a, 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 B, for example this. Then I'm in an A, I will stay on the X. I got a second A, I'll still be on the X. I got a third A, I still be on the X. The moment I see the B, I go to the Y. Now if there is no more input, I gonna accept it because this is my final state. Right? So what is the straight transition uh, diagram for this, right? So we have um, the transition here. Right, then we got the inputs. Say for the input is was either A or B, and what states we have? We have the X state and a Y state. X on a A stays on a X, X on a B goes to Y, and Y on A uh, will go back to the X, and Y on B will stay on Y. Right? So this is one thing. Now let's take up a little challenging example, which is 
A or B clean star than A B B. That means I may have up front A or B any many times or even absent. Okay, this portion can be absent, and this portion is compulsory. That is A B B. That means at least I need to have a string which has an A B B in it. So this is the key. What we have to see the minimum in this example. The minimum in the example is A B B because this can be absent or this could be there. So I first do what I say. Uh, I make my uh, states. If I got an A, I go to this state. If I get an B, I go to this state. And if I get another B, I go to this state. So see the minimum. This is a trick, okay? And this is gonna be the final state because accepting state because uh, I have got the string A B B. Let me call this state as a state one, state two, state three, and state four. Whatever you like, call it. Okay. Now on this state up front, I'm saying I can have an A. So if I have an A, no problem. I'll stay here, right? Or I may have a B, A comma B. If there is an A or B, any many as you like, you're gonna be here. Okay. Then if you have an, uh, sorry, I, I, I just. Um, uh, mix it up because if we have two A's here now uh, I don't have to say A here because this is the B. If I have an A here I will go to the state because maybe after that I will be followed by two B's, B and B. Okay? Um, if I have a B I'm going to stay on the state 1 because I have not um, I, I may, maybe the string I have is like this B A B B now I got a B, I'm going to stay on the state 1 then if I have an A at state 1, I go to the 2, okay? Maybe this is a kind of string like this, or maybe this is kind of string like this, B, A, 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 B, B. Now, in this I am seeing uh, my, uh, the post fix path, that's this guy, but after B, A, I am having again an A, okay? So if I am having again an A, what I am going to do is, I gotta stay stay on here on the A right excuse me okay so if I have an input of for example uh, firstly B I will be here and if I get an A I go here Maybe after A, I will get a B, then I will go to this state. But maybe after A, I have got any many A's. I will stay on a state 2. But the moment I got the B, I will go here, right, on a state 3. Now, maybe on this state, I am uh, I have, because I could have A or B's, any many, okay? Maybe after this state, I have the A again. So what should I do? If I have an A here, because... So that means I am not having the A, B after B, I, I need to have an, another B. So I am not having this thing, maybe if this string was A, uh, firstly B maybe, A, after it was A, then it was B, but after that it's again an A. So I am not finding uh, after A the double Bs. So I, I am still, up to here, I am still on this spot, okay? So what I do is, if I find him A, I go back to the state 2, okay, because I have found whatever it is. Now after that, A, it is an A, I found the A. After that, it need to be a couple of Bs, right? So I'm here. Uh, from 3, I go to the 2. Now maybe I find the B, I go to the state 3 again. And the moment I find after I saw the e, A, now I saw the B, the moment I see the B, I go to the state 4 and I accept it, but maybe it was a statement like this, uh, that I had an A, then I had a B, then I had a B, but after that maybe I have again an A. So that means I'm still not at this string, which has to be uh, compulsory A double B at the end, because after double B, I had an A. So that means I got to go back to this state if I have an A. So now I have received the A. If after this I have got a couple of Bs, then and only I can accept it. Okay, so this is a kind of transition diagram for this uh, finite automata.
Let's take a uh, little simple example. Say, for example, you've got an epsilon. Okay, so this is uh, a state this. We start it, state A, and on the epsilon, I can go to the state B. So that means without taking any input, I can go from one state to another state. So you have to keep this in mind because we're going to see the types of automata where we take up these things. Okay, if you have a single uh, A, for example, what are you going to do? You have a state, start state, and after taking input A, you go to this final state, right? Okay, if we have A star, that means any many A's. That means we got a start state, the start state is our final state, and if it takes A's, okay, you can state here, and you can accept it. And if it's something else, you, you are not going to accept it. What about A plus? Okay, this will also tell you that you can skip if there is no A at all, if there is no input at all. You can accept that also, right? But A plus means at least you need a one A, so you need to have a one start and you need to have a one A at least. Then and only then you can have a final state and after that you can have any many A's. Okay? What about this? A R B whole star. Okay? That means you can have A or you can have a B and you can have any many. And you can ab have epsilon as well, that means that's absent. So if the start state is your final state, and if you have an A's or you have a B's, you can stay on there. Right? Uh, this can be in short be written as like this. If this is in the final state, you can have A comma B means A's or B's or even absent. Uh, this is your final state. Okay? Now finite automata is of two types. Okay? One is the deterministic. Finite automata DFA and N uh, DFA that is non deterministic finite automata or sometimes NFA. So, in deterministic, we have one transition for input state and there are no epsilon moves. And in non deterministic finite automata, we can have a multiple transitions for one input in a given state and also I can have an uh, epsilon moves. Okay, say for example, we are on a state uh, something, okay, some state. And uh, there is a transition of A and go to some other state, uh, state 2, and this is the DFA. But if in, in, in NFA we can go like this, we have a state 1, which is a start state, okay? Then on an A, we are going to the state 2. On the same A, you can go to the state 3 as well. So this is, we have multiple transitions for one input in a given state. That's one thing right uh, one difference between deterministic and non-deterministic so you have more decisions to take here you have less decisions to take here also we have uh, no epsilon moves here in the deterministic but in non-deterministic we can have an epsilon move for example this is state one and on epsilon without taking any input you can go to the state two okay and you may go from this side also multiple transitions on the epsilon as well then you can take up an a here you can take up an a here and you go to another state, you go to another state. Now we are taking uh, the A's, uh, but on, 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 on one, um, th 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 this is not a multi transition, right? This is a multi transition that you are on the same uh, so here without input actually. We go to the two states here, epsilon moves. And on here, we can, on the same input, we go to the uh, two states from a same state. That is the multiple transitions. In your uh, uh, deterministic DFA, final automata, you can take only one path through the state graph, right? You are on our state, you go to the A, you go only here, and if you take on here, for, the, for example, you took the B, you go only here, and if you took the C, for example, you go here. So there will be only one path, okay? Because we have only one transition over one input. But in an NFA, there's a mess, okay? On, for example, A, you have gone here, uh, maybe on A only you can go here and on epsilon without taking any input you go here from there you can go to other states from here you can go to other states as well and from here you can go to other states as well okay so in NFA if 
uh, say for instance the acceptance state if, if, if your uh, input takes you some from one of these ways to the acceptance state because uh, there are some choices from here or if you're gonna A from here or here but from here you are say for example go to the acceptance state so this NFA will accept it because uh, from one of the choices you have gone to the acceptance state now DFA and NFA uh, they actually recognize same set of languages okay because actually uh, DFA is a part of an NFA right so this is my DFA this is my NFA they actually uh, regular language I put in the middle. That means uh, both of these guys recognize the same set of uh, regular language, right? Now DFAs are faster to execute. They are faster uh, because there are no choices to consider. They are a bit slower, right? Because there are a lot of choices. They can be upside moves as well, okay? Uh, but NFAs are in general smaller, okay? Now let's uh, first concentrate on, should we concentrate on DFA first or NFA first? What do you say? Is it uh, okay if you go for DFA first? Then you forgot that um, we should first go to the NFA because our uh, lexical analyzer, um, you are less. First converts to regular expression to the NFA, then to the DFA and so on, right? If you forgot, let me show you the diagram again what we were talking in the beginning, right? Um, where was that? Uh -huh. Is that saved or not? I don't know that saved or not. Yep, here it is. So we say we have a regular expression that is uh, being uh, converted to NFA, and then we convert that to the DFA, uh, actually our, um, which one our 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 uh, scanner will convert the DFA then to the minimize DFA that is the program so we should first concentrate on an NFA uh, and then we will see how to convert NFA to the DFA and then DFA to the code right so if I give you the proper visualization what you're gonna do okay is we had uh, what's called a lexical specification firstly we got uh, the lexical specifications Then from length of space, we basically we uh, represented our length of space using a regular expression. We said there are the representations, okay, the implementations. We're gonna go for automata, that is NFA. And after we have the NFA, we convert that to the DFA, deterministic one. And then um, after that, we have what we call the table driven implementation. We see the table driven implementation of DFA and obviously after that it's going to convert into some kind of program um, which is which actually implements your uh, which actually scans your input to convert them into the token